this subject of prayer, today's reading, actually the next, after this, there's still two more readings on prayer because it's a, it's a wonderful and important uh, subject to get into. And I'm going to get into it, but I wanted to share something that kind of tickles me when I think about prayer. And it's uh, uh, one man um, saw a friend of his, and the friend looked kind of glum. And he said to his friend, what's wrong? And he said, well, three weeks ago, um, I found out that a relative I didn't know I had had just died, and I inherited $15,000. And the man said, well, that sounds good. He said, uh, last week, um, um, two weeks ago, um, we had a, a raffle at work, and I won $2,000. And the man said, well, that sounds good. And he said, last week, um, a friend I'd loaned money to years ago forgot all about it, paid me back $3,000. And the man said, well, that's good. What's, why are you so glum? He said, this week, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and why I love that in relationship to prayer is that I think in this room there are many of us who've been on the spiritual path a while and most of us who've been on the spiritual path a while have had prayer answered in some way or another and yet there's a sort of this feeling of, but what have you done lately? You know, <laughs> what have you given lately? We, we forget. We forget that connection. And the way that Swamiji picked up prayer this week is very uh, deep and inspiring to me. He talked about God as a spirit. And when I came on the spiritual path, I had left like many of you, I'd left the religion that I was born into because there were just unanswered questions. And I still remember when Swami was teaching us uh, yoga philosophy way back, 1970s, early 1970s, I was there. And he was explaining that God did not create the world. The image that we see on the Sistine Chapel that God pulled together some dust, made a man, breathed life into it. That's a kind of a common um, understanding. It was the way I was raised. It didn't make any sense to me. And then, but I didn't know the answer. And he said what the Indian teachings say is God became creation. He became everything in creation the planets, the animals, each one of us. He became me. That meant he or she is within me always. When I'm having bad thoughts, when I'm in a mood, the presence of God is who I am. And it was such a powerful and thrilling thought. And it says basically that each one of us has God as much inside of us as the great masters. But in us, God is hidden under veils of delusion, distraction, desires, and we can't perceive it. And our journey as devotees is to pierce that veil. And how, how do we do it? We meditate, we have devotion, that's what we do at specific times during the day. But during the rest of the day, we pray. And some people think, well, prayer is asking. Prayer is asking, I need more money. I need to uh, have a better house, whatever it is. You know, prayer is us sharing with God throughout the day, all day, asking, inviting inviting his help, just as we did in the purification ceremony. We have to make the invitation. We say, what should I say to this person? How can I love this, this person in my life who's just hurt my feelings? We ask these questions, and we look for the responses. And 
I think we've all had those moments where perhaps someone has come up and said something that was so clarifying to us. Um, a friend just was saying this to me uh, on Friday or Thursday, just that out of the blue, someone came and told her a story, and that story was exactly what she needed to hear. And she said, are you an oracle or something like that? You know, it was just God using people, God using the book. We open the book, and there is the one line that we need to free us from that confusion that we had. Those are ways that we're in communion with God through prayer all the time. But sometimes, and this is so special, we find ourselves up against something that is really big for us. And we have no other recourse. It's not just a light thing like, oh, well, will you give me the words to say this person? But if you don't, my life doesn't depend on it. Their life doesn't depend on it. But sometimes it does. Sometimes it's really a deep need inside of us. And when we can fully concentrate our minds and fully bring devotion, and uh, I don't want to use the word desperation, but the sense of, I don't have any other option here. You have to help me. When we can do that, and we feel a response, that veil that hides God from us has been pierced. And we feel God entering in. We know that he is listening. God is in our hearts all the time. So everything you're asking, everything you want, he's hearing it all the time, but we don't know it. But in those moments when we have no other option and he responds, it's transformative. Another thing that we have to think about is that it's probably we who are the ones who are stopping our prayers from be being answered. We put a distance between God and us. God is here. God is as close as he can get. He is us. And yet, people pray like, A, he might be far away. B, he probably not that interested in me. But I have to keep kind of whipping up and trying to say the right words and making sure that, you know, that maybe I say it right and that then he'll be pleased and then he'll, you know, give me something. So, as Master said, it's like praying like a beggar. And in doing that, we push him away. He's saying, look, I'm right here. I want to give you everything. Won't you receive it? Won't you realize I'm the nearest of the near? We know, no, you're far, far away. And so we push him, we push him away, with, sometimes even with our prayers. The way we pray is pushing him away. But finally, this is something that I've been thinking about a lot. It was a, a blog that Naya Swami Devi wrote. And it was an amazing story of a young man who was hospitalized with dysentery and he was dying. And he was so weak, he couldn't move, he was in pain, and he had tears just streaming down his cheeks because of the pain, because of the oncoming death, everything. And into his hospital room comes Ananda Moy Ma, the, a great, great, great woman saint of India. She walks into the room and she says, I can't help you like that. You need to smile. And he says, Ma, how can I smile? You know, he's so weak and he's so sad. And she said, you have to try. And so really, with everything he's got, he, he just kind of puts a, like a little tiny wand smile on his face. And as soon as she does that, she begins to massage his body vigorously all over for many minutes. And he's healed. But she couldn't do it without him reaching up. You know, 
I was so struck by that story. And then I realized you find that same story in autobiography of a yogi. Master is eight years old. He's dying of Asiatic cholera. He's so weak, he can't move. What does his mother say to him? She says, look at the picture of Lahiriya Mahashaya and bow to him mentally. And so he does that. And immediately this light just comes out of the picture and he's healed. Think about that. Lahiri, God can do anything, but he can't do it unless we in some way reach to the best of our ability to get on his wavelength. You know, whether it's by love, whether it's by reaching toward joy, in some way to get ourselves on his wavelength. Now, I know there are people who've been really, you know, really, really down and out, and they've said things like, okay, God, I don't know if you ex even exist, but if you exist, please help me. I know there have been people who seem like they haven't done much and they've been totally down and out, but always there's some little, some little reaching up. And that is what we have to do. She didn't say to the man, you know, you have to, you know, laugh and chuckle. Just, just give me something. It, just anything. Just something, anything. And same with Master's, speaking, with Master's mother. Just, just mentally bow to him. So think about that when our prayers are not being answered. To how can I attune myself? God's wavelength is joy. His wavelength is love. It's hard for him to reach us if we're not in some way on a wavelength that he can touch. He's not asking much from us. Just whatever we can do to align ourselves with his wavelength to receive it. So the Gita talked about, the Gita reading that we just heard talked about, fix your attention on me. Give me your love. This is what God wants from us. Um, Gyana Mata, Master's closest woman disciple, or his most advanced woman disciple, said, there's one answer to all your problems. This is the best description of prayer. She said, God knows your need and is more willing to give it than you are to ask for it. God is more willing to answer your prayer than you are even to ask for it. She said, fill your mind with the realization of his all-encompassing presence and healing will flow in body, mind, and soul. <laughs>